hakika all of us kila mmoja wetu who are born again wale ambao tumeokolewa a testimony kila mmoja na ushuhuda and i think all of us na naamini kwamba kila mmoja wetu can attest to the fact that kwamba anaweza shuhudia ile in our lives katika maisha yetu as individuals kila mmoja wetu vile alivyo we have seen him kwamba tumemuona doing great things akifanya mambo ya ajabu you know there's a song in our languages kuna wimbo kule kwao it says he took me from here anasema kwamba ule umbo inasema kwamba alinichukua pale chini he put me here akaniweka hapa katikati and put me there akanirudi kunichukua juu and it does not matter who you are na kwa hivyo haijalishi wewe ni nani as an individual kwamba kila moja who has been saved ambaye ameokolewa you can say i was somewhere Unaweza shuhudia kwamba useme nilikuwa mahali na sasa nimeinuliwa kiwango fulani kwa sababu ya neema yake I would like to thank the leadership Ningependa kushukuru uongozi for giving me an opportunity kwa sababu ya kunipatia nafasi tu kidogo to talk kuweza kunena about the ministry of the ladies niweza kuzungumzia juu ya huduma ya wakina dada in the AFM katika uh, AFM amen amen um i think you are all aware that uh, we we are a department Naamini kwamba kila mmoja tunajulikana kwamba wamama wana idara yao at a local level katika mashinani that is at a church level yani katika lile kanisa la pale mashinani individual local church level katika makanisa ya pale mashinani and most of the churches also national churches they have they could call them probably the districts or the regions na basi baada ya kutoka mashinani basi ile idara huwa inapanda kulingana na vile ambavyo ilivyo mpangilio ya kila taifa and even there we then from the countries basi kulingana na mataifa vile ambavyo mpangilio ulivyo basi huwa inatoka pale mashinani inaingia kimkoa na mambo kama yale then we have the national leadership of the whole country that is what we call national sisters fellowship but they may be called differently by different countries but it's at that top executive level na where kuling... it is called national sisters fellowship na kulingana na mataifa jinsi ambavyo mpangiliwa wa ulivyo basi kile kikundi huwa kinaingia na kinakuwa katika kiwango sasa cha kitaifa and from there na kuanzia hapo we as the AFM we have this AFM international sisters fellowship na kwa hivyo ikifikia pale sisi kama AFM uh, kanisa hili kuna kuwa kuna kikundi cha kimataifa at this conference we it is a conference of AFM international na katika mkutano huu ambao tuko nao wakati huu ni mkutano wa AFM international but we all know that they also recognize the other divisions for sisters that is called AFM international sisters fellowship and uh, through god's grace i've been elected as the chairperson basi tumpigie yesu makofi tunapokuwa pale basi kuna kiki kinkundi ambacho kinaongoza mataifa na amefanyika kuwa yeye ndiye mwenyekiti and i think it was in 2007 na ilikuwa ni katika mwaka wa 2007 and i think we were in zambia na na mimi nakukumbuka kwamba tulikuwa katika inchi ya zambia we 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 had gone to the conference there tulikuwa na mkutano pale 
and the fathers were meeting na wale mababa viongozi wetu walikuwa wanakutana and we as ladies it's like we were idling na wamama basi ilikuwa ni kana kwamba hawakuwa na mpangilio mzuri because the fathers had a meeting there maana ma, wale viongozi mababa walikuwa na mkutano pale and we just thought no na tukafikiria tukasema hapana why can't we also have International Sisters Fellowship. Ni kwa nini basi tusiwe na kikundi cha wadada ambacho ni ushirika wao? And I remember we were uh, we were uh, at the Zambian I think it was International Conference Center in one room there. Na huu mkutano wa Zambia basi tukaunganika tukaweza kuwa na mkutano wetu katika chumba mmoja. And as ladies we said no. Na katika hii tukasema na katika huu mkutano tukasema hapana mbona tusiwe na hivi and that's how the national international sisters fellowship was born na basi pale kikundi cha wamama cha kimataifa kikawa cha kuanzia and in a way the sisters also asked me to be the leader basi wadada katika mkutano ule wakaniuliza niweze kuwa kiongozi And then we went to the UK. Na basi baada mkutano ule tukaenda UK. And in 2009. Na katika mwaka wa 2009 na kenda. And the first biggest conference that we had was in 20 Uh, to 2013 in na, Johannesburg. Na mkutano basi uliofuatia ulikuwa ni 2013 mkubwa pale Johannesburg. Where major decisions were taken by the ladies. Mahali ambapo mikakati ambao inahusiana na kikundi cha wadada iliweza kuwekwa And by then since our inception we had worked on the constitution for nation for AFM International Sisters Fellowship and we have the constitution which has been adopted by our council Basi viongozi walipokutana waliweza kuwa na mikakati, mikakati ya kuweza kuweza kuweka kuwe na katiba ya kikundi hiki So each National Sisters Fellowship should have our constitution. Na kwa hivyo wale viongozi wa kimataifa lazima waweze kuwa na hii ambayo ndio katiba yao. And because we, we have also decided to be a bit electronic as the ladies na kwa sababu basi wameingia katika kijiji kitali kama wamama. We even have a youngsters therefore The ladies Aha. also have Tuwa a WhatsApp makofi kwa sababu wameingia na wako na mtandao wao wa WhatsApp. And those who are in our WhatsApp group have the constitution by now they should have printed it. Na wale ambao basi wako katika WhatsApp group yao basi wamepata uh, katiba hii na kwa hivyo ni vizuri kama wangekuwa basi wamefanya uh, wamekuwa wamefanya chapa. We no longer deal with the post offices. Hatu siku hizi hakuna ile hali ya kutuma barua. We have sent them also by email. Na kwa hivyo basi tunaitumia email kutuma kile ambacho tuko nacho. And if your country leader does not have it eh, because some of them have not come they have sent representatives please make sure you see us so that we can give you the information related to the AFM International Sisters Fellowship. Na kwa hivyo viongozi wale wa kimataifa le vizuri kuweza kuwa na email na ili kile ambacho tuko nacho tunaweza kuwatumia waweze kujua kile ambacho kiko. So we also have a council na pale katika kile chama tuna wale ambao ni viongozi ama mkutano huwa tunakutana We know that the AFM International has the council but the sisters also have a council Tunajua kwamba katika AFM kuna ule mkutano ama wale viongozi na katika idara hii ya wamama basi tuna mkutano na viongozi wetu And it consists of the office bearers Na kwa hivyo wale walio katika ofisi and the national sisters fellowship that is the membership country leadership na kwa hivyo wale ambao wako members wa wa wa, wa kanisa hili la kimataifa kwa hivyo tunakuaga tuko na wao so for example for uh, mama katimu it will be herself 
Kwa mfano kwa mama yetu Mrs. Katimo atakuwa yeye the secretary na mwandishi the treasurer na yule mweka hazina and the vice na yule ambaye ni naibu wao they form the council kwa hivyo wanakuwa na chama chao and the national sisters fellowship executive also hmm? form part of the council na wale ambao basi wanashikilia katika uongozi wanajumulika wana katika kikundi kile we also allow Zevas without voting rights. Na kwa hivyo pia kwa mkutano wetu ama mikutano yetu huwa tuna tuna tunawaruhusu wale ambao ni waangalizi waweze kuja kutazama kile ambacho kinaendelea. And our our constitution does 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 say where it is deemed necessary and in the interest of the council the council may appoint honorary members with voting rights subject to triennial renewal of such membership but we have not reached that that there could be honorary members but there is room for it in the constitution na katika katiba yetu kuna kile kipengele ambacho kinaruhusu wale ambao wako katika ofisi kwamba wanaweza katika uwezo wao kuchagua mmoja wao ambaye ako nje aweze kujumulika katika kikundi kile so we are also saying we are accepting na kwa hivyo tunasema kwamba the AFM International Sisters Fellowship shall accept and adhere to the common confession of faith of the apostolic faith mission na kwa hivyo tunasema hivi katika katiba yetu kwamba chama kile ambacho ni cha kitaifa lazima kiweze kuwa na ungamo la imani yetu kama vile ilivyo kanisani. Yes. And I'm, I'm just going to summarize now. Na ninataka kutamatisha sasa. That uh, our aims and objectives are to fellowship. Malengo yetu ni kwamba tuweze kuwa na ush between and amongst all the AFM National Sisters Fellowships. Kati yetu na wengine ambao ni wanachama ambao ni wa AFM. Yes, and we we are looking forward to all the nation, the national churches sisters fellowship to be part and parcel of the AFM International Sisters Fellowship. Na tunatarajia wote ambao ni member waweze kujiunga pamoja nasi na tuweze kuwa kitu kimoja. And I think what is important you cannot have an organization without financials. Na kilicho cha msingi basi ni kwamba hauwezi enda mbali pasipokuwa kuna fedha. In 2013. Katika mwaka wa 2013. And the council that was held in in Johannes in in Johannesburg. Katika Africa the sisters wale wadada council wal katika kile chama had to say how are we going to raise funds kwa, to run the organization katika ule mkutano basi kukawa kuna swali je tutaweza kuwa namna gani na fedha ili iweze kutusaidia katika chama chetu and the agreement was that na katika makubaliano yale yakawa ni hivi we are going to ask kwamba tutaomba ama kuuliza that each member wote ambao ni washirika okay or each sister of AFM kwamba kila dada ambaye ako katika AFM whether you are from Uganda Kenya Belgium USA etc na kwa hivyo haijalishi inchi ambayo umetoka kama ni Kenya Uganda na mali ambapo kote kanisa liko just once a year kwamba mara moja kwa mwaka you contribute two dollars unaweza basi kuchangia dola mbili katika mkuta, katika mfuko ule na hii ni kama uh, mia mbili ya hapa Kenya or ten rands mama katimu ama rand kumi each lady here if you belong to AFM na kwa hivyo kama wewe ni mwanachama kama wewe ni wahili kanisa your subscription fee to AFM International Sisters yani kujiandikisha katika chama cha wadada 
It, it means in Kenyan rent, uh, shillings, it will be 102. No, I learned that uh, 202. I learned that your exchange rate to a dollar is 101. So if I got the information right, so it means per year, each it, Kenyan sister will contribute 202 shillings. Uh, kwa hivyo basi kulingana na vile ambavyo ilivyo ni kwamba wadada wote wa hapa Kenya Sisters Union Department kwamba unakuwa wa kutoa 200 kila mwaka. Oh 2 dollars per annum. And the money na hizo fedha is taken by the leadership of the National Sisters Fellowship. Basi inafikia kikundi ambacho kinaongoza and it's contributed to AFM International Sisters Fellowship. Na basi na and the money has to reach us before the of the uh, AFM which is the birth of AFM which is May of every year na kwa hivyo basi zile pesa zinapo ku, ku, kusanywa na kila taifa basi mwa, mwezi wa watano maala mbapo tutakuwa na mkutano hizi feza ni vizuri ziweze kuwa zimefika and we would like to thank the member churches for having contributed. Na tunashukuru kwa sababu ya mashirika wote wakiweza kuchangia mfuko huu wa kitaifa. Okay, and we are looking forward to each and every one of you to support. Na tunatazamia na kuomba kwamba kila mmoja aweze kushirikilia kushirikilia haya maono. So we go to, we are invited by different countries to go to their conferences and seminars and we have done that. Na kwa hivyo tunaenenda katika kila mataifa tunapoalikwa katika mikutano and with, na tumefanya hivyo with some of the contributions we have also donated to churches where there are needs na katika mitango hii ama mfuko huu wa kimataifa tumekuwa wakusaidia mahali ambapo kuna hitaji and i've been told that at the meeting that was held in the morning na niliambiwa kwamba katika mkutano ambao ulifanyika asubuhi the treasurer of afmi i'm concluding now baba eh, kusimile na kwa hivyo uh, yule mwai kazini kusimile told the meeting akaambia mkutano that because they don't have money kwa sababu hawana fedha wamepungukiwa they have had to use our money as the sisters kwa hivyo ilibidi waweze kutumia pesa za wadada maana kulikuwa na upungufu kwa so, mfuko wao you are 2 dollars kwa hivyo 200 yako are taking them to zimbabwe kwamba inawapeleka kugaramia mkutano wao zimbabwe jameni tu waweze kuwapigia makofi are taking them to kenya na inawaleta hapa kenya so we are going to look forward to the two dollars from Uganda, from Zimbabwe, from yourself. Na kwa hivyo, kwa mashirika wote, mataifa yote ambao ni ushirika huu, kwa hivyo, tunatarajia kwamba watachangia mfuko huu na miambili kila moja ambao inatoka kwa kila dada. And we also have our own ladies conference. Na pia tuna mkutano wetu wa kila dada. And we would, we normally link it up with the national conference of the national church na kwa hivyo mkutano wetu tunaupanga hivi ili weze kuhusiana na mkutano mkubwa wa kimataifa unapopangwa we share the days with them na kwa hivyo tunashirikiana siku na wao last year we had it with Zimbabwe. Mwaka uliopita tulikuwa na mkutano kama huu pale mwinchi ya Zimbabwe. Our next conference is in 2021. Na mkutano mwingine wa kimataifa utakuwa ni 2021. And we hope there will be a national church that will say come ladies for the conference. Na tunatarajia kwamba katika ule mkutano tutaambiwa kwamba wadada njooni kwa mkutano. May the good Lord bless you. Ebu Bwana wa amani aweze kuwabariki. Tuweze kushangilia dada kwa makofi mazuri kariga jina la Yesu. Ah uh, we can do more better than that. Let us encourage you. Tunazofanya vizuri, tunazofanya vizuri kuliko hivyo. Thank you Mrs. Chikane for that very good presentation. Asante sana Mrs. Chikane kwa sababu ya duty ni wakati wangu vile vile nikinyenyekea to invite the vice 
president of Apostolic Faith Mission International kumkaribisha vice president wa AFMI Dr. Mazira Daktari Mazila so that he may come and bring us the servant of God ili atuletee mtumishi wa Mungu let us encourage him in the name of Jesus si moyo kwa makofi katika jina la Yesu anapokaribia katika jina la Yesu amen amen welcome Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning to you all. Na wasalimu nyote katika jina la Yesu. Habari zenu. Good morning to you all. Habari zenu. Habari zeni. Mm, habari zenu. Habari zemi. As it, that is it. Asante sana. Thank you. Asante sana. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am here for a very light duty. Nashukuru sana kwa sababu niko hapa tu kwa kazi nyepesi. The Bible says men cannot live by bread alone. Biblia inasema watu hawawezi ishi kwa mkate peke yake. But by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Lakini kwa kila neno linalotoka kinywani mwa Bwana. This morning we are about to hear the word of God. Asubuhi ya leo tujiandae mioyoni mwetu tuko tayari kusikia neno la Bwana. And my duty here is to introduce you to the man of God who is going to speak to us this morning. Na kazi ya huyu mtumishi ni kutuletea mtumishi ambaye atatunenea asubuhi ya leo. The name of the person that is going to speak to us Mtumishi ambaye anakuja kunena pamoja nasi is from the church of Pentecost from Ghana. Anatoka kanisa la Kipentecote kule Ghana. Yeah, he is a delegate from Ghana Accra. Yeye yeah, ni delegate kutoka kule Ghana Accra. His name is Joseph Asabili Kapate. Hey, jina lake ni hivyo amesema. You said you just said Joseph Asabili that's that's much better. Mm sema tu hivyo from the church of Pentecost kutoka kanisa la Kipentecote representative of the chairman of the church of Pentecost akiwa na akilisha makanisa yote ya Kipentecote Pastor Eric Nyamaki Ke eh mchungaji huyo huyo a member of the executive council of the church of pentecost mmoja wa viongozi wa pentecost the area head of the church in the uh, tokadi area western region of ghana ehe uh yeye -huh. anasimamia makanisa maeneo hayo a member of the missions board of the church na pia yeye ni kiongozi katika mission board ya kanisa he is married to one wife ameoa mke mmoja and he has two children na ana watoto wawili it is my greatest opportunity this morning sasa ni nafasi yangu ya kipekee to invite bila let's clap our hands as you come joseph k ya sabili mpigieni makofi tusimame zote tusimame tupokee nabii thank you so much askofu wa sabili karibu karibu askofu wa sabili you can see the grace and peace from God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit be with us all amen oh, some of you did not say amen it, it was a blessing so so when you say amen it means so let it be I said grace and peace from God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit be with us all I really thank God for this opportunity giving us and I want to thank the leadership of this great church particularly Dr. Frank Chikane and Dr. Frank Chikane for the invitation as you had um, 
It was the chairman of a church which was supposed to be around and he has other scheduled official duties. Na kama mnavyojeni kwamba yeye ni kiongozi wa makanisa na pia ako na jukumu zingine nyingi. So he was not able to attend. Kwa hivyo hayeye hangeweza kuhudhuria. But he asked me to um, come in his stead. Na akaniambia nije kwa niaba yake. And I'm grateful that when my name was given the organizers of a conference agreed that I could step in. Na nina furaha sana manake jina langu lilipopeana kwa viongozi ambao walikuwa wanapangilia nikasikia jina langu limetajwa nikashukuru sana. It's a great privilege to be around. Hii ni nafasi kubwa ya kuwa mahali hapa. But above all I have listened to the messages that I've been giving and I have also sat in um, one of the seminars eh zaidi ya yote ninashukuru sana kwa sababu ya jumbe zote ambazo zimeneno mahali hapa zimekuwa za baraka kwangu i thought it's good to be around to learn nalifikiria ni vyema kuwa mahali hapa siku ya leo when i was asked to come i thought about the topic and i want to speak generally about discipleship generally nalipoulizwa niweze kuja niliwaza kuhuzu ujumbe ambao unaendelea wa uh, discipleship you would notice that if that is what i'm going to do then a lot of people have already uh, spoken about some of the things that i want to say muweza kuelewa ya kwamba kama hiyo ndiyo nitakayoelezea wengi wenyu wameelewa manake ujumbe umekuwa ndio huu anything that is important bears repeating ah uh, jambo ambalo ni zuri ni jambo ambalo linarudiwa rudiwa and then i'll try as i go along to bring in practical examples in our church Nita, the church of pentecost nitaleta ninapoendelea kuhubiri mifano kadha wa kadha ambayo inaambatana na kanisa letu so i would like to read the scripture in matthew 28 16 to 18 ningetaka kusoma maandiko katika kitabu cha madhayo 16 mlango mlango 16 to 18 16 16 hadi 18 Then the 11 disciples went I'm reading Matthew 28. Tunasoma Mathayo 28. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him they worshiped him but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, "All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of, of the holy spirit and teaching them to obey everything i have commanded you and surely i am with you always to the very end of the age madhayo madhayo 28 mstari wa 18 unasema yesu akaja kwa kwao akasema nao akawaambia Nimepewa mamlaka yote mbinguni na duniani basi enendeni mkawafanye mataifa yote kuwa wanafunzi wanafunzi mkiwabatiza kwa jina la baba na la mwana na roho mtakatifu na kuwafundisha kuyashika yote niliyoamuru ninyi natazameni mimi nipo pamoja nanyi siku zote hata ukamilifu wa dahari It is needless to say now that the idea of discipleship is a derivative from the great commission. Ah, ni wazi kwamba hili funzo la discipleship limetokana na amri kubwa ya Yesu Kristo. But from my point of view the great propelling truth on which discipleship hinges. Lakini kwa upande wangu ukweli ambao unaonekana mahali ambapo discipleship imetoka is the statement all authority in heaven and on earth ni ujumbe kwamba mamlaka yote duniani na mbinguni yamepeana kwangu mimi and then the other statement and surely na statement i, will, I am with you always na to the end of the age statement nyingine ni kwamba kwa kweli nitakuwa nanyi siku zote za maisha yenu you see if you look at the the scripture unapoangalia maandiko in verse 18 then jesus came to them and said all authority 
in heaven and on earth has been giving to me. Katika mstari wa 18 Yesu akaja akasema kwao akawaambia mamlaka yote nimepoa yote kwangu mimi. Then it is followed by the word therefore. Na inafuatilia na neno hapo inasema na kwa hivyo. And then the conclusion of his statement is just that go make disciples of nations. Alafu tamatisho ya ujumbe wake Yesu anasema enendeni kote ulimwenguni mkifanya watu wa wanafunzi. Someone commenting on this scripture said that if you read the Bible and you meet the word therefore you ask what it is there for. Mwingine akasema katika maandiko hayo unapokuja unapokuta kwamba kwa vivyo hivyo hilo neno linamaanisha nini? Where to go because of all authority in heaven and on earth that has been given to him. Lakini inasemekana kwamba mamlaka yote duniani na mbinguni yamepeanwa kwangu mimi Yesu akasema. For me this is critical. Kwangu mimi hii ni ya maana sana. Attempting to do kingdom business in an authority lesser than the all inclusive authority given to Jesus could be fruitless. Yeah, mambo ambayo ni ufalme wa mbinguni kufanya kulingana na Yesu itakuwa ni bure tu bila Yesu. The assurance of Jesus being with us also is also key. Being na, with us always is na, also key. Na himizo ya Yesu ya kwamba yeye yuko pamoja nasi hiyo pia inawekewa mkazo sana. And that, if you appreciate this then you will appreciate while he, why he asked them to wait and receive power. Eh uh, no unaposhughulikia anapoambia mungoje ndiposta mpokee nguvu and I want to emphasize because this is a Pentecostal church. Nataka niweke mkazo maana hii ni kanisa ya Kipentecoste. The church that I belong to is also a Pentecostal church, Pentecostal in the sense that it believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. Kanisa ambalo nimetoka kwao pia ni kanisa la Kipentecoste kwa kumaanisha kwamba tunaamini katika nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. And I want to say that the Holy Spirit is given power is giving. We need to emphasize this when we are talking about discipleship. Lazima tuweke mkazo ya kwamba Roho Mtakatifu ndiye anayepeana nguvu na ni nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. It is the Holy Spirit and power in the Holy Spirit is giving to us. Ni Roho Mtakatifu na nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu zile zimepeana kwa kwetu. Power is not of ourselves. Hizo nguvu sio zetu binafsi. Now if you look at the spectrum of Christianity now. Unapoangalia katika kuzunguro kuzingukokote na kipendekoste. It is as though people think that now now we have become Christians we have power in ourselves. What wana wana is giving. What wana mimi ya kwamba manake tumekuwa wa Kristo sasa tumejipatia papa sisi wenyewe lakini nguvu zina piano Roho Mtakatifu. He is a person. Ni Roho Mtakatifu ni mwanadamu. He is God. Yeye ni Mungu. You can dictate to him. Hawezi ukamwambia afanye hivi. You rather have to wait upon him for him to empower you. Itakubidi wewe umgoje Roho Mtakatifu akupatie nguvu yeye mwenyewe. There is nothing natural in a human being ha, that can do God's kingdom work. Hakuna kitu mwanadamu na uamandamu wake anaweza fanya jambo bila Roho Mtakatifu. Because the enemy mungu. that we are dealing with is described in the Bible as the God of this age. Maana kichochote tunafanya katika ulimwengu imesemekana kwamba ni kama Mungu wa dunia hii. And no person in his natural strength. Na kuna mwanadamu katika nguvu zake za kipekee. Let me repeat this. No person in their natural strength can stand the devil. Hakuna mtu kibinafsi anaweza simama na nguvu zake amshinde shetani. For a being who has caused the commotion in this world to the extent that God himself has to leave his throne on earth on in heaven and come to the earth maana to with the issue wakati shetani alete mgwaruso duniani Yesu mwenyewe ilimbidi atoke mbinguni akuje ulimwenguni apambane na yeye I want us to see discipleship in this context nataka tuone wanafunzi wa Bwana katika mahali hii see at times people work out in their own belly their own strength unaona watu wanafanya kazi wengine na nguvu zao wenyewe and when we do that we do not see the results na tukifanya hivyo hautupati manufaa manufaa yoyote this kind of work that has been given to by God cannot be done by natural men natural strength Hii maandiko tumepewa na Mungu haiwezi kafanyikana kwa mtu ambaye ni wa kawaida not even by personal resolve hata sio kwa sababu ya nguvu na ujasiri wako mwenyewe because believe me if God confronted you with if you were confronted directly by Satan kama shetani and run kama shetani atakukujia wewe mwenyewe na nguvu zako utakimbia mbio kabisa 
Our strength is in the Lord. Nguvu zetu ziko katika Bwana. And it's not ours. Na sio kwetu sisi. David said that the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear? The Lord David is, is the strength of my life. Yangu, yangu, nani yangu. He's not saying that he has strength in yeah, himself. Yeye hasemi ana nguvu zake mwenyewe. He says that the Lord is the strength. David anasema Mungu ni nguvu yangu. Yes. He says that the Lord is the strength. He says that the Lord is the strength. David anasema Mungu ndiye nguvu zake na msaada wake. So when the Holy Spirit becomes Hivyo Mungu anapokuwa anapokuwa katika nguvu za maishani mwako then we can see results sasa tunapata kuona mazao it is so important ni ya maana sana hallelujah hallelujah so we want to say that a certain measure of trust in the ultimate superiority of jesus christ kwa hivyo kuna kipimo fulani ambao kinaoneshana kiwango kikubwa cha ukuu wa yesu kristo over all spiritual powers juu ya maroho yote na nguvu zote is necessary in prosecuting the agenda of discipling the inawezekana kutoa kazi na kufanyiza kazi amri ambao wanafunzi walipewa placing inside the authority of jesus tukitafuta uwezo na mamlaka ya yesu as well as his being with us always hata tukitafuta tukiwa pamoja naye kila wakati until the end of the age hadi mwisho wa dahari is so important ni ya maana sana in facing the challenge katika hali ya kukumbana na na shida za ulimwengu hallelujah 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 with the issue of who wills ultimate authority in Ka the universe katika kujua nani ana 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 nguvu na mamlaka katika duniani yote what i'm trying to say is that now that i've cleared the issue of who wills spiritual authority ninapo ninaposema hii ni kusema ni nani ana nguvu za mamlaka ya roho ya kiroho the process of trying to renew reconfigure the mind and the thoughts and Kuna, spiritual disposition of all human beings kuna hali ya kuelewa mawazo na nguvu na mikakati ya kiroho ya mwanadamu then begins then alafu tunaamini ina, inaanza hallelujah hallelujah The great commission is 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 missional in intent. A go ye therefore. Ah, uh, amri kuu ni kama amri ya ya kuendeleza. The extent of coverage all nations. Na ime ime imechukua nchi zote. And this is a command given to the disciples. Na hii pia ni amri hata kwa wanafunzi wa Yesu. The church. Kanisa lenyewe. In this piece I use the word church and disciples coterminously that is to say they are the, the same kwa hivyo ninapotumia kanisa na wanafunzi wa Yesu ni ja, ni kitu moja tu wao ni kitu moja tu because the generic definition of a disciple is an adherent or a follower of a teacher kwa sababu maana ya mwanafunzi ni mtu ambaye anafuata mwalimu wake a disciple of Jesus is a Christian according to the New Testament. Mwanafunzi wa Yesu ni Mkristo kupitia kwa agano jipya. If you read Acts 11:26. Kisoma Acts 11:26. It is written that the disciples were first called Christians. Ah, inamaanisha kwamba wanafunzi waliitwa kwanza wa Kristo. So all Christians are disciples. Kwa hivyo wakristo wote ni wanafunzi wa Yesu. They are the disciples of Jesus ni wanafunzi wake bwana Yesu and they constitute the church na wao ndio wanatengeneza kanisa in this scripture it is obvious katika maandiko haya ni wazi wazi that these disciples that constituted the church were believers meeting regularly ha hao wanafunzi ambao walitengeneza kanisa ni waumini ambao walikutana kila wakati and they were committed to the apostles teaching na walikuwa wameingia sana katika mafundisho ya mitume as Christ had commanded kama vile Yesu alivyosema but these were by no means finished products lakini hii ilikuwa tu ni mambo ambayo yalikuwa yanaenda kumalizika they were not necessarily living Christ like lives every day hawakuwa wanaishi katika maisha ya Ukristo siku baada ya siku and we need to listen to this the scripture says they continued in the apostles teaching progressively maandiko yanasema waliishi katika mafundisho ya mitume siku baada ya siku getting challenged wakipata so challenges wakipata challenges and exalted to live old ways na wakaamua kuishi katika njia moja and embrace new wines na kutafuta umoja wao that rhymes with the nature of the kingdom of god ambayo ilikuwa inaambatana na makusudi ya ufalme wa bwana the end product will be mwisho ya mambo yao ilikuwa ni hii the people that have been taught how to think watu ambao walifundishwa jinsi ya kuwaza 
act or behave na kuwa, kuwa na tabia ambazo ni za kiungu as Christ kama kama Kristo Christians wa Kristo it is so important ni maana kwa hii kabisa hii people become followers of Jesus watu wanakuwa wafuasi wa Yesu they embrace him wanamtukua Yesu wanamkumbatia mkumbatia Yesu as lord kama bwana their savior mwokozi and their treasure na hata dhamana yao and as, as uh, speaker after speaker has emphasized na kama vile muhubiri baada ya muhubiri hivyo sema it is not adequate to bring people to the church room Eh, si maana kabisa ama uwezo kuleta watu katika hali Because ya kanisa. Because the people that we are bringing there they have their own concept of who God is and who what God does and how we should live. They have all that in their minds before. Maana watu ambao wanakuja makanisa mengine wana mawazo mengine Mungu ni nani anakaaga ni namna gani anafanyaga ni namna gani. So my understanding of discipleship as taught in the great commission basi kuelewa kwangu katika hali ya mtume ni nani kama ilivyoandikwa katika maandiko is a process of helping someone to understand all that Jesus taught ni njia kusaidia mtu aelewe jinsi vile Yesu alivyofundisha regarding the principles of living in the kingdom of God kulingana na kanuni na kuishi katika kanuni za kibibilia and then the end result is producing a believer who is like Christ na mwisho wa mafundisho hao ni kumleta mtu ambaye ameamini katika Kristo bwana hallelujah hallelujah i always say that god is not coming to rapture church members nimesema na ninasema mungu hakuji kuchukua washirika wa kanisa if you use church only to mean a place where people go ukitumia tu kanisa mahali ambapo watu wanaenda kukongamana but if church members are disciples lakini kama kanisa ni mitume then you are right in saying that is coming to rapture basi una una, una haki church ukisema members. yesu anakuja kunyakua kanisa lake hallelujah hallelujah for me then i would want to break these into three i call this particulars kwa mimi ndio sana nataka kuvunja hii kwa 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 milango mitatu and it is so important for us to recognize this na ni vyema tutambue mambo haya because now if you, if you, i don't know about it, i don't i don't need any argument sitaki kuwa na kubishana kubishana kwingi then it taught me something kuna kitu nilijifunza hapo if you remain in this church kama utaishi katika hili kanisa they will teach you what they think watakufundisha kile wanavyofikiria but what does the bible say lakini maandiko yanasema nini So I have decided that okay it is the same with any denomination denominations are simply full of human beings ah, they would not always have all the mind of god nikaona. go read it yourself to find it nikaona hii denomination ama madhehebu yako sawa sawa yote jambo muafaka ni kwamba kasome neno na bwana ukaelewa na ukapata ufufunuo and if we have people who are really interested in finding what is in the bible na kama the sisi ni watu am, kama sisi ni watu ambao wanatamani sana kujua maandiko yanasema nini lazima tudadisi maandiko na tuelewe maandiko even paul hata paulo he was happy that when he spoke alikuwa na raha lakini aliponena the barians wanted to go and check bare wale wanafunzi wa barea walitaka kwenda kuchunguza paulo amesema nini if what he was paul of all the anointed people that have come to pass kwa wote ambao walikuwa wamepakwa mafuta paulo hata mabarea walitafuta paulo amesema nini it is so dangerous let me say this kubwa ni sema hivi church listen to me again it is so dangerous to live your spiritual life in the hands of another person ni hatari kubwa mkristo ana watu anapoacha maisha yake kwa kwa mtu mwingine when you are young ulipokuwa mchanga you need to be helped ulitakiwa kusaidiwa when you are a babe ulikuwa mtoto they used to they used they have to feed you wali walikupa chakula in a feeding bottle katika ile ile monyonyi monyonyi you don't become 20 years a christian ulipokuwa mzee sasa and depend only on sermons that you have heard na una, in the na, umekuwa mkubwa na bado unategemea mwanadamu mwingine because you see if your pastor is is an evangelist he will take you along the evangelist path kama mtungaji wenu ni mwinjilisti basi atakupeleka kwa raini ya uinjilisti but you won't get the proper balance lakini utapata balance go read it yourself jisome maandiko to get disciples ili upate kujijukuzuluja haleluya i don't know i like giving this example ah sijui nini lakini napenda kupeana huu mfano you see the church is like you use matatu here. Eh, hey, unaona kanisa ni kama matatu wa matumia matatu wa pasikweli. 
In, in Ghana, the taxi drivers at times, some of them, they don't have too much money. They, use, they buy one gallon of petrol. When, then when you go for only two miles, then, then the petrol gets finished. Hapa Kenya si kama Ghana. Ghana taxi wananunua garani moja ya petroli na unaangia kwa taxi kifika pale petroli imekwisha. Does it happen to the matatu here? Hapa matatu zinafanyaga hivyo. And hey. because, because the, the fuel in the carburetor is almost dried up when they, they bring the a gallon of um, petrol to put inside you have to you have to push them they have to push them and push them before na kwa sababu na kwa sababu taxi ambayo ilikuwa imekubeba iliweka garani moja ya mafuta ikifika pale ikamalizika kwa hivyo wanapoenda kununua mafuta nyingine lazima ile taxi isukumwe kwanza ndio ipate moto maana yake petroli kwa imekwisha if you are a Christian and you, you meet a car in that condition, you want to help the, the man you push the thing, oh, then he would uh, try the clutch, try the clutch, and then his back, and then they go. Kama wane mukristo ukute dereba kama yule, utamusaidia kufukusuma gari, kusukuma gari, hadi wakati tapanyo clutch, clutch, yueze kupata moto na yueze kuenda. But you don't expect the driver to expect you to push him to go and drop all his passengers. He, the cash is back and he goes. Ah, taxi ataki ati ategeme ya kuamba muskume 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 mbaka mahali atapata wateja wake. Gari ni kipata moto, gari ni nakwenda. Even the most kind person on earth won't do that. Even if you came from church service, you ah. won't do that. You expect him when you push him small, he should go. Unat ata mtu ambaye ni mukarimu sana hata vanya hivyo inda tega me ukumzuma kidogo galili mewaka basi ni dia kwenye kijana. All right, this is a parable of how a Christian is. He ni mfano ama vile mukristo alivyo. The pastor is just pushing you small. Mupchungaji ana kusuma kwa. Smart continue. Na kikusuma kidogo na wewe nenda zako. He is not supposed to push you, push you, push you. Every Spark and continue. Tell you we we enda na we enda umeskuma. Hey, enda na we enda. Enda umepata umepata umepata. Enda sasa. It, it is only those Christians who can disciple. Ni wale tu wa Kristo watamua. So ministers are important. Apostles, pastors, elders. Wa huduma wote wa tungaji, ma bishop ni watu wa maana sana. But I'm telling you here, it is dangerous for members to depend on us. Lakini ni hatari kubwa wakati wa shirika wana tegemea. Release them to God. Release them to God. Waachilieni kwa Mungu. Let them grow and find him. Wacha wakuwe na waende kivyao. Then they can teach others how to find. watafundisha watu wengine. When they depend upon you. Wakikutegemea wewe. They think you have got everything. Watakuwa watasema wewe ni kila kitu. But it is true. Lakini ni kweli. We haven't got it all. We depend on God. And I, when I know that I depend on God, I wouldn't mount a pulpit and preach as though I want people to depend on me. When ah, I know that my soul is so And if you, if you look at the spectrum of the church now, what is what people are doing? And if you people are doing? Ukiangalia makanisa mengi hivyo ndivyo watu wanavyofanya. May God have mercy on us. Mungu wetu aturehemu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm almost finishing. Karibu sasa nimalizie. Because our time says we should. Maana eh, wakati wetu nasema lazima tu tumalize. We have talked about discipleship and the Holy Spirit. Tumeongea wanafunzi wa Yesu na Roho Mtakatifu. And particularly prayer. Na sana sana kupitia hali ya maombezi. I have said that it is impossible for a heart to be changed. Nimesema ni vigumu sana moyo wa mwanadamu kubadilishwa with mere words. Na katika mambo tu ya kawaida. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Kani eh moyo wa mwanadamu ni moyo mchavu mbaya sana. Even after conversion. E hata baada ya kutoa unachi. The Holy Spirit. Inategemea Roho Mtakatifu. Not flattering of people. Si kucheza cheza na watu. To change people. Ni kumbadilisha watu. And then the other thing that I say is that prayer is so important. Na jambo lingine nimesema maombi ni jambo la maana sana in the process of discipleship. Katika hali ya kuwa mwanafunzi ama mtumishi wa Yesu. In the first place I think others have talked about the, the need for boldness. Eh kuna mahali wengine watumishi walianzilia wakasema kuna hitaji kuwa na ujasiri. And they need to be able to communicate communicate clearly. Na hata hali ya kuwasiliana sawa sawa. But I want to say that prayer deals with the strongholds in the hearts of men. Na nataka kusema maombi yanafanya kazi kwa mioyo migumu ya wanadamu and substances them to receive. Na inafanya mioyo ya wanadamu inakuwa rahisi kupokea ujumbe wa Bwana. But lakini post conversion discipleship 
demands intercession. Lakini kuwa mwanafunzi mwanzo lazima kuwe na uombezi. And that is what every everyone who is playing any role in the church should be concerned about. Na hiyo ndio kila mmoja ambaye yuko kanisani anatakiwa kuangalia kabisa. And if you read the letters of Paul, na posoma maandiko ma barua ya Paulo ya Paulo, you find a number of times utakuta katika wakati mwingi mwingi but he is praying ya kwamba yeye anaomba for people that he calls saints ambao anaombea wale watu wanaitwa saints and praying in, ama wateule with the aim of bringing them from one state to the other spiritually katika imani ya kuwaleta kutoka kiwango hiki hadi kingine kupitia roho mtakatifu continuous intercession for saints kupitia kuwaombea maombezi kwa watakatifu that they would grow into the fullness of Christ. Ili wakuwe katika utimilikaji wote wa Kristo Bwana. Not, not just prayer meetings that are asking God to bring this givers visa to go abroad, si. givers children this that that. Now even Pentecostal churches much of our prayer si. is centered on the welfare of the members. That's si. not si maombi kama hii Mungu wapatie hao watoto vijana, wapatie visa waende ngambo, wapati maombi mengine yanapita zaidi ya hapo na makanisa yetu bado ya katikati ile level ya kuomba maombi kama yale. I just want you just to look at the letters of Paul and try and pick out the prayers. He was praying even the Corinthian church, a whole people that he called saints. If you look at the things that he had to deal with. Nataka tuone barua moja ya Paulo, barua moja ambao hata wakati alikuwa anaombea katika kanisa la Efeso, barua yake moja inasema tu maombezi, maombezi, maombezi. But if you are inclined to write, you can write 1 Corinthians 4. Andika hiyo. Wa Korinto wa kwanza 4. First Corinthians wa Korinto wa kwanza 4 to 9 ine mpaka 9 Ephesians 1:15 wa Efeso 1:15 hadi 23 and many 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 more na maandiko mengine mengi mengi You can check Philippians 1 Tazama tena wa Filipi 1:3 to 6 tatu hadi sita He is always talking about I pray Paulo anasema niliomba that you would be filled with the knowledge ili muongezeke katika heri ya I want you to know how hard nataka, I am struggling for nataka, you Paulo anasema nataka kanisa mjue jinsi nilivyokuwa nikingangana kwa sababu yenu A minister's work does not finish with preaching Eh muhubiri hamalizi tu na mahubiri A minister's work does not finish with preaching Muhuduma ha malizi tu na huduma. Now you came to speak. Ndazo umekuja kunena. You say your people have heard. Unasema watu wamesikia. You have to pray to make sure that the things that you spoke yes. will work in them. Muhubiri lazima akimaliza ujumbe wake awaombe ili watu waingiwe katika kuelewa lile neno Then you can say. Ha hapo utasema that the word of god does not go kupitia neno la bwana na linaenda halikudi alirudi bure tu without accomplishment lazima neno la mungu litutimize yale alivyosema alafu naweza sema the word of god is like a true edged sword unaweza sema neno la mungu ni kama upanga ukatao kuwili hallelujah hallelujah i want to end with just a few examples of what we've been trying to do i know but we have a very close the way you do your things the way the kind of things that i have patiently listened to and seen nataka you tumalizie your church is much like ours nataka nimalizie na mambo haya kanisa lenyu tu ni kama letu vile mnavyofanya mambo mipangilio ni kama vile tunavyofanya tu and sitting down quietly is just to try and feel in my spirit ninapo, where i am ninapoona nyinyi mmekaa pale mmetulia tuli inahimiza moyo wangu ni kama vile tu kanisa letu lilivyo and i'm happy that this is a proper association with na nina, nina furaha ya kwamba hii ni kanisa moja ambayo ninaipendeza na, ninapendezwa nayo sana but what we have been trying to do lakini kile tumejaribu kufanya is preaching the basic message ni kuhubiri ujumbe tu wa kawaida ujumbe of, tu rahisi of jesus dying on ujumbe wa re yesu kristo kufa msalabani not come to jesus Sio come to Jesus. Si ujumbe tu kuja kwa Yesu. You you bring forth twins. Oh oh uta utapata hii na ile. Come to Jesus. Kuja kwa Yesu. Because when I was when I was not with Jesus, I was wearing tattered clothes. Now that I have come, I'm wearing suit. If this is the kind of gospel you preach in in America, you won't get any convert. Ha. We hii jumbe kama utahubiri America ati nilikuja kwa Yesu nikiwa na mararu mararu matambara nilipookoka sasa navaa tai na navaa suti. Ukihubiri America utashindwa maana kama mejana mavazi. 
And then at the end of a year, you have bought a car. I, <laughs> I went to Norway. I saw someone who said he did not like polluting the, the, air, the air. So he would never use a vehicle. They, they have vehicle. You were praying for some. Do you want to use that to bring them to church? For them, they don't have that problem. They have trains everywhere. <laughs> it is only in Africa you can tell people this. Hey, Korea America Hawa, Mutu Hapa even You see that yesterday our dear doctor Shikari was concerned that the church hasn't changed and the people that are corrupt in the in the society are all Christians. Ah. It is because of the gospel we preach eh. to them. President Wadu wa sema jana usiku kwamba kanisa limekuwa corrupt na wale wameharibu kanisa na corrupt kanisa ni wa Kristo wenyewe tu. It is because of the gospel. Ni kwa sababu ya ujumbe ya injili hii. People are already corrupted. If you tell them tayari wamekuwa corrupt. If you tell them that when they come to church they will get this they, will, they you are corrupting them more. Unapoambia watu ukija kanisa utapata gari utapata muke. Unawaharibu mawazo yao sana. They have to hear something. Lazima wasikie jambo. That is not of this life. Hiyo sio ambayo sio ya maisha yao. That is given by the Holy Spirit. Hiyo inaletwa na Roho Mtakatifu. Today I pray in the name of Jesus. But the power of the Holy Spirit who we'll shake this building and touch each one of us if we are going to deal with corruption it will be done by people who really are disciples and who really have grappled with sin their interest is not on this earth not in the things they get not in titles and positions they know that this is not they are not citizens Disciples are citizens of heaven. What meet? Oh, meet you man. Ni wa shiriki wa binguni. They want to populate. Wanataka kuenda kuingia binguni wa jazz. They are not helping people to be comfortable sitting here. Hawataki watu wakae hapo wakiwa wametulia. Watu waende binguni. My own observation is this. Lakini jambo la mwisho ni hili. The church does not change. Kama kanisa halitabadilika. There are some people when Jesus comes they will not be happy to go. Kuna watu ambapo Yesu akija hawatafurahi kwenda binguni because they have not finished using their properties. Maana hawajamaliza kutumia mali yao ulimwenguni. Simply because of the gospel we preach to. Ah, tumia mali yako kuhubiri Yesu. But if their heart is on to him. Lakini kama mioyo yao iko kwa Yesu. Shawatai. Bori ni kabosh tu katania. Shaka ya baboya. Libo kabosh ya monda bronto ni maseka. Mandu liri ni kabosh ni kabosh shaka talabu. Bako raba shaka boho. I am telling you that something is going to happen. The young ones will change. What what tabadilika? They will change. What tabadilika? Because when God says that he will do something. Kama Mungu atasema atatenda jambo, he will do it. Atalitenda. I need to stop. Ni lazima nimalizie hapo. Even though I haven't finished speaking. Hata kama namalizia katika hali hii. But I hope I have added a bit. Lakini naamini nimekuongezea kitu katika maisha yako. To what you have heard throughout the period. May the Lord bless AFM. May and may the, 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 the energy behind what I'm speaking about. Na nguvu katika yale ninanena kwayo be your portion. Iwe sehemu yako. God bless you. Mungu awabariki sana. It's wonderful can you appreciate the man of god in a better way thank you, you so much sana tunaweza kumshukuru mtumishi wa mungu kwa njia nzuri that's the truth of the matter huo ndio ukweli wa mambo there are some people once they die they die holding their property kuna watu ambao wanataka wakifa wanakufa wakishikilia vitu vyao because they are not using for the glory of god kwa sababu hawavitumii kwa utukufu wa mungu and that's why they die they die with a lot of with a lot of struggles wakati wanakufa wanakufa vibaya sana they don't Apingi rest ngana. they don't rest hawapumziki they die wanakufa holding their holding their fist akiwa ameshikilia ngumi hivi because Okay. We, we want to get a clear advertisement here please. Okay. Now, 
we are saying that they die holding their fist tunasema ya kwamba hao watu ni wale hufa wakiwa wameshikilia wamekunja ngumi hivi so because of the things of the world kwa sababu ya vitu vya dunia that's a good warning hui hiyo ni onyo kali bringing people to the kingdom because they will get kuleta watu kanisani kwa sababu ama kwa ufalme kwa sababu watapata and that is not on the issue of repentance lakini sio kwa njia ya toba mungu atusaidie sana may the lord help us bwana atusaidie sana now we are bring for our lunch umefika ni wakati wa chakula cha mchana national delegates and even the local delegates ningependa tu kuwauliza wale ambaye ni wametoka katika nchi za nje na wale ambaye ni wa hapa that we we have come for a meeting we should be in the